Hi, boys and girls. So this is the final day for the Still Life project, and we sketched it. Then you chose your favorite angle of sketch. You went to final copy paper. You colored it. Now we're looking at it for craftsmanship and to see if you have added your tints and shades to your actual objects. So the lower portion where the light is not showing should have shading or shadow. And the upper portion of your shape should have highlights or a tint. Those are the words we use for this. Remember our chart for craftsmanship? We should be all the way up to a level four where it is solid colored in. But now we might add shading to the bottom of the objects and highlights or tint to the higher part of the object where the light is touching. I'm going to show you an example of this in my video. Let me just change the camera angle. So I posted on the um, beginning of this web, this video, what the actual still life looked like that I was looking at and some of the progress for each of the stages. So here it is kind of final stage. I'm thinking about the background also. You see, I filled that in and some parts are white because the actual shelving was white. I colored them with white oil pastel. That was my choice material. I'm using oil pastels for this. And the clarinet, even though it is black, I'm not coloring it in super dark because there are lights showing. And the nice thing I will say, though, is because I'm using oil pastel, I can layer the coloring and I could also blend it by using my finger. Remember the tools videos if you're wondering, hmm, how do I use this tool again? You might want to watch one of my how-to videos from my web page. My HES sites, third grade, coloring supplies. You can look in there for other ideas. So the idea is I don't, right now, the craftsmanship level of this, I'd say I'm between a two and a three. See how light, I see a lot of um, background color showing through. So I need to go a little darker, fill in those white spots where the paper is showing through. Now that doesn't mean I can't have parts that are light, parts that are white, parts that have highlights. Those things can still show, but I need to have that done by not showing paper through, but by actually having white oil pastel. So see by filling this in, how I'm controlling the blend with where I'm putting my finger and I'm filling it in and coloring in those white spaces to fill in the shape and the design. All right, here, this, this I can easily fill in with a clean finger and I can blend the colors. And when you blend it, you want to blend it in the shape of the object, all right? This is a vase or a jar and the jar curves around. So I'm gonna curve with my finger. See how different that looks already. Now I'm going to put in some shading for this. So I need my black and the shading would go on the bottom edge. Okay, so I make it would be darker on the very bottom edge and then I'm going to blend it and I'm bringing it up into the other color to make it dark. And when I look at it, there are some highlights in it. So I could actually just go with white and I could give the shine that it has with some of the white, just like my clarinet. It, reflects on all of these silver parts so I can go over them with the white. You could use a crown. If you're using crowns, you push harder with the white crown over it. Color pencil is the same thing. Another nice thing with a color pencil though, as you saw in the video, you could actually erase parts. You can't really erase oil pastel, but you can layer it on. So there's different bonuses. So again, I take a clean finger, I could go into the seashells in here. So I first have to fill this jar. And so I filled it with seashells. So I'm going to blend these seashells in. And now I'm ready to actually color the um, jar with its highlights and lowlights. So it does have, this jar did have um, a metal ring around it. Now is the time to add those kind of details that I have on it. This is not me outlining it. This is the dark shape that was on that. 
I might give it shading. I might give it some gray because it's really, it's clear. So it's not that light. And again, I'm going to drag my finger and blend it. And this has a lot of shadowing on the rim. So I'm adding that with the gray. And then it has highlights. That's where I see the light reflecting off of this shiny surface. It's real important that you get your background going, all right? My background color was red. It's a good thing I have a brand new oil pastel for that. So I'm going to blend the background. And mine has wrinkles in it. So once I get the coloring filled in, I'm then going to start looking at the wrinkles that are in it. And I'm going to add the wrinkles to the background. It's not just a solid wallpaper. It has texture to it in the way that it's designed. So I need to include that in how I finish it. And so I might make it darker by putting in some a little bit of black. I could drag some black in to show the, sh the shadows or the wrinkles that are in it. And then you blend it with your finger. All right, I look forward to seeing your projects. You're going to download them onto the Google Form and onto Artsonia for the finished project. Next week we start our next project. Quick amendment. Um, when I did the videos, I didn't have some of these tools available, so I wanted to just share with you, um, if you're doing chalk or oil pastel, this will be very helpful. This is called a Terillion stump, and it is basically paper in a spiral like a pencil, and it's a way to get into blend in very small areas so that you can control it. If you don't have a Terillion stump available, which they're very inexpensive, you can pick them up at an art supply store, you could take a paper towel and if you roll it, you can make a point with that. Or you could, it, it's kind of iffy. If you put a pencil with a point, once in a while the point goes through. So you might not want to take that chance, but you could make a point out of a paper towel and then you can get in and you can do some very fine detail blending with the terillion stump or a point of a paper towel. Once it gets dirty with the paper towel, you can just twist it and roll it to another place so you have a clean part. The terillion stumps are actually, you um, peel them and you peel it off to make another clean end. So you take off the one part and you can peel it off to get it clean. So there are two different ways to control the blending if you use chalk or oil pastel. I hope that helps you guys. With pencil, of course, you can just sharpen it. And if you use crayons, they also are sharpenable.